Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome to another episode. I am Anna Marie Janish, and today I'm with Morgan. And we're actually recording this podcast episode for both of our podcasts. We're doing something a little different. So let me just introduce myself real quick. I am Anna Maria and I'm feminine embodiment mentor. I also do a lot of like mindset coaching with female entrepreneurs, a lot of business energetics. And also I work with star seeds and light workers on finding and remembering their life purpose and today I have my beautiful soul sister (laughs) Morgan Uh, so Morgan please introduce yourself thank you hi everyone hi Anna Marie thanks for doing this fun episode different format today that's gonna be gonna be fun So yes, I'm Morgan. I'm all about personal development, self-leadership coaching, and I mix that with shamanic healing and energy reading techniques so that we can go deep to release blocks to your success, fulfillment, and happiness in general. Yes, so like you were saying, starseeds and lightworkers and... um, These are, of course, we are aware that these are just labels, but we are in 3D world, material world. So, of course, we need labels so that our people can find us. Because as uh, people who are sensitive to energies and who are basically experiencing life on Earth, especially in childhood, wondering, what the hell am I doing here? (laughs) Um, It's very hard for us to stick a label to our forehead, right? Yeah, and you just feel like an alien, basically, because that's what you are. You're (laughs) You're just an alien here walking among humans. I mean, we all are in in a way, right? Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, that feeling of like, you don't belong here. I always felt like that. I always felt like that no matter where I was, no matter how young I was, I was always feeling like I was just dropped here from nowhere. I don't know where I come from because this doesn't feel like home. My family didn't feel like home and definitely my town where I grew up didn't feel like home it's like I don't belong here and I always wanted to go somewhere I always wanted to be somewhere different be someone different you know I was wishing that when I was a child just go somewhere travel just not be here but you know like you go and you travel and you experience other things and meet other people, but you don't feel like completely at home. Maybe you do find a place where you feel good when you feel like, oh, this could be my home. You know, like I feel here in my, in Zagreb where I live, I do feel really good. I feel a lot better than I used to feel when I was growing up in my small town, but it's not like, oh, I really belong here on earth. It's just feeling different. And it's very hard to describe that. You just know it when Mm -hmm. you feel like that. You just know it like, oh, this is something new. And this is how many like star seeds and light workers feel. But maybe you don't even know what that is. So let us explain that. So a star seed is a person, is a soul that came from other planets and used to incarnate in a lot of other different planets and this when it comes here it could be its first life and it could feel very confused and if you feel like a light worker you just know that your purpose here is something different it's serving humanity it's bringing the light to people and helping them shift their frequency and helping them rise their own consciousness. And for me, the biggest thing learning about this was that 
I don't have to have this like huge life to be able to impact people. Mm -hmm. It's just my presence. It's just my energy that is impacting people. And that is very on subconscious level, very energetic. We are not even aware of that, that we are actually helping humanity in this way, just being here. So I think that is very important to say. Yes, like you, you touched on a lot of interesting points and there are two that I, I want to, to reflect upon out loud. Uh, the first one is the feeling of not being home. But because it's within you and you don't really talk about it. Like as a child, I remember I was observing other children, but I was like, I felt I was the spectator of life. Uh, but it, it would never have occurred to me to go to a classmate or, you know, like a school friend or to be like, hey, do you also feel that you are an alien or because I didn't, I was not even aware that I was feeling different, that I was just feeling, but I was not conscious of what I was feeling. And I thought there was something strange about me, you know, like uh, what's wrong with me, but that came later. I was just very withdrawn, very um, like really observing. And, you know, at school in my, classroom as far as classmates are concerned I like I wasn't completely isolated I just didn't have like a you know like a gang or a best friend or you know the most popular girls or boys of of school or anything like that so I was still part like still involved to an extent because even if I was bullied I still had um, like people I could you know hang out with but I never really felt connected to these uh, humans, hum the, these other humans. Just I say human because I don't like to say the word person. <laughs> but um, and it, it really felt weird. So it's really until you start awakening to yourself, like remembering your own soul knowledge, your own soul purpose, that you start to meet like minded people. And that's when you're like, oh, you felt that way too? Oh my God, me too. And then you're like, oh, maybe I was, you know, not weird after all. Well, yeah, still, but, <laughs> you know. And then there is something else that you said that was, um, yeah, about light worker. There is something that uh, you and I always talk about in our conversation, but there is, a, there is a kind of misconception, I believe, around light workers. Like, oh, just be positive and just it's all about love and light. No, it's not. Because we live in a world of duality and everything has its polar opposites. So, of course, as a light worker, you are a bringer of light, but, but it's more transmuting. And you, you cannot separate the, the light from the shadow at some point. You need to, and shadow doesn't have to be scary, doesn't have to be horrible and super dark, you know, shadow is just, I always define shadow, the shadow aspect as everything that you reject about yourself, that you judge, um, like you feel you have a weakness about a certain aspect of your personality or you are too sensitive like get over it you are being too sensitive and things like that so you, you get to learn from society that being sensitive is not normal not cool and you shouldn't be like that but when you are a light worker you are also a shadow worker and that's very important to mention that that is so true and I always, you know, I always feel is something that just comes up for me that like this knowledge is that all these shadows that we do have, they're just part of us, our human part of us, our crucial part of us that are here to teach us. These parts are here to teach us about ourselves, to transmute, to actually, you know, they help you remember all these ups and downs all these lessons are 
here to help you remember. Like I would not be able to remember all these things if I did not go through a lot of hardships in my life that I went through. Like I, there's no way that I would remember that because that brought me to this knowledge, that brought me to the teachers, to uh, people that were talking about this. And it's not like, oh, I just read this thing. It's like, I know this. I like, I know this. I rem- I'm starting to remember this. And then you, you read about this more and like, oh, this actually makes a lot of sense now. And I'm not crazy. Like, I'm not going crazy. And I know that a lot of people do feel like that, that they're a little crazy or they're misunderstood or they're weird or they're really having a hard time here on earth is like nothing just working out for them in a way that they want and even if they have a beautiful family and a successful business sometimes they just feel like they don't belong they're searching for this like bigger purpose and I know that some souls cannot endure this life and it's really hard for them but we are here to learn, here to help, and here to remember. And all these things that are happening to us is just, they're here to remember, right? They're here to let us grow and help other people grow. And I feel like we need to work on that. You know, I was always very attracted to metaphysical stuff. Even when I was a child I was you know I would find a book or something and I would read I would look at this um, books about the universe even though they were not metaphysical or anything I was just so drawn to that but later when I started to you know learn more about this metaphysical stuff everybody in my surroundings my family would say oh that's stupid you know like that is a bunch of crap like that's not true like leave that alone and I would believe that you know and I had this big period of my life like my whole like teenage years and all these and all these years that I thought that's bullshit and also I felt like alone like I cannot read about that like I'm lost because you know these books this knowledge they they make you feel good they make you feel like oh I'm actually remembering this stuff they help you feel grounded and more like okay with life in a way so when you're disconnected from this knowledge you can feel really lost but the more you are working on this and remembering and reading and connecting with other people that helps you to remember that helps you to find yourself and be okay with being a human because it was not even that long ago you know I was speaking about you uh, I I was speaking uh, about this with you how like why did I even come here like I used like am I crazy to come here like you have to be crazy to to come here because like it doesn't matter where you are in your spiritual growth every time you come to earth every time you incarnate anywhere like it's your choosing it's your choice you want to do that and I was having a very hard time accepting that I actually really wanted to come here like why why would I do that and then I started reading more about uh, soul purpose and why we choose to come here and everything started to make sense I started to make peace with that and I started to accept my human life because you know for us there are some things that just don't make sense like wars, like hatred, it just doesn't make any sense. Like, why would people act this way? And you tell yourself, like, why would you even want to live here? Why would you want to come here? Why would you want to come back here? Why would you want to have kids on in this place? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, that's true that it's a, it's a hard place. And even if uh, a lot of us are tricked into, like a lot of souls are tricked into being reincarnated, you know, like the, the fake light and seeing the light at the tunnel and then it's actually the false light and, you know, the 
um, using like soul contracts as a trap to kind of play with your emotions and keep you in lower vibrations so that you you come back on earth um, we still choose like it, it, it's it's a very delicate topic because we, we cannot know but whether we are aware or not we chose to come here for people like you and I, we remember that we actually made the choice to come here. I, I have the remembrance of having been with a group of other souls, like we were being taught about the, like we were, we were about to leave wherever we were in the universe and we were about to come and live on earth and some soul, some being, whoever that was, was teaching us like, okay, you're going to go on earth. And, and I remember that uh, like clearly but it's like like you said why why did i choose to come here because it is hard the the energy of fear the energy of hatred the energy of separation um is something very hard to deal with and also uh, we we don't understand because when we see the bigger purpose that we are actually all on earth we all have a mission why add violence hardships hatred uh, to, to each other while we we are all suffering in a way or another we are all in pain because suffering and pain is different but we are all in pain in a way or another we are all here because we at some point we we have something to do right we all have something to do here on earth so why why do we have to to go through sometimes unnecessary drama, right? You were saying um, that we, we need to remember and the, the hardships training us to remember and like, it's all about triggers. And I know some people are <laughs> triggered when I talk about triggers. <laughs> but let me explain what I mean here. It's a weird sentence. I know that's why I'm laughing, but Triggers are not bad. Triggers are an opportunity to look why you are triggered and what is the wound behind your trigger. I used to have a lot of triggers that I wouldn't even realize that I was triggered. Like I was very, I used to be very uh, emotionally reactive. And it doesn't mean that, I, you know, usually when you think triggers an impulsive reaction, you, what comes to mind for a lot of people is just like, anger outbursts you just slam the door throw the pen and just like oh but, but, yeah, so, sorry i'm not gonna swear here but you know what i mean but it's not necessarily like being triggered is just having a, <laughs> a strong emotional reaction that generates a physical reaction as well like um you can freeze you can become become completely like um when i say like frozen you know you just shut down Shutting down is an impulsive reaction. Um, you can walk away. You can start crying. You can sometimes you laugh too. Sometimes you want to laugh in circumstances that are horrible. We have all heard about you know someone being in a funeral and starting to want to laugh. It's just a reaction, and we cannot judge ourselves for these uh, reactions. Of course, we we feel embarrassed or we feel this or that, but at the end of the day, if we listen to the triggers, that's when the growth happened. I really, truly believe that triggers are not bad. I'm not saying they are pleasant. Uh, you've never heard me say, yay, I'm triggered. <laughs> that's cool. Let's heal. Of course, it's unpleasant. It's uncomfortable. But when you realize you're triggered, then you have the choice, the awareness to either repeat, like action, reaction, or pause and like, what what do I want to do? Actually realize that you don't have to react immediately. And I always, always use the telephone analogy. When your phone rings, you're, you're into action, reaction, you jump on the phone, you answer the phone and you start talking. But when you, so this, the, the phone ringing is the trigger. But then when you, you see the phone or you hear the phone, in my case, it's seeing it because my ringtone has been off for years, like always on silent. <laughs> but like when I see my phone ring, I'm like, oh, it's ringing. I check in with myself. Do I want to answer? 
And if yes, I answer. If no, maybe I want to call back later. Or maybe not at all. I mean, I'm just imagining different scenarios here. I just wanted to say that, like I was saying, triggers are a good opportunity for healing. If you are not feeling like a victim of your triggers. And we have all been there. You know, we, we've all been there. So there's nothing to to feel guilty about or ashamed or be like, oh man, that's me. Oh, I feel bad. No, that's all good. The The purpose of these conversations is to raise awareness. You cannot change something you are not aware of. So this is an opportunity for, you know, for, for everyone who listens to have things brought to their awareness and see that triggers, when you change your point of view on triggers, uh, it starts changing your life start changing that is so true and i completely agree um i know that this can be a lot of information and this can be maybe different especially when you're new to something like this when you're new to this information for me right now this is like a normal conversation (laughs) this is something that i think about every single day but I know that there will be some skeptical people who will say, oh, this is not true, you know, and all these stuff, they can get triggered or you just say, no, like, I don't believe this or it can be overwhelming or anything like that. But there is so much research about this. Mm -hmm. There is so much research about the past lives, about reincarnation and what happens when you die. I know that a lot of people in mainstream media and like quote unquote normal people think that we have no idea what happens when you die, but we do. We have a lot of information and research about that in a field of hypnotherapy. You can get all the answers from your subconscious mind. You can get all the answers from your soul. So it's true it cannot be faked and i know that some will say oh it's fake but when thousands and thousands and thousands of people say to you the same information it's it's not fake like Mm -hmm. who's crazy here actually and yeah that just says a lot about what is happening uh, when we die, what is happening when we incarnate, what is happening between our human lives. And I can always like recommend some books, some people who are doing this research. Michael Newton has done a lot of research. He is like the father of of, uh, past lives and what is happening uh, when you die and researching all these stuff. And Dolores Cannon is also doing a lot of stuff. I know she died a couple of years ago, but uh, she wrote a lot of books. She did a lot of research on this. And if you feel like, oh, this is not true or you're skeptical or you want to research more, just go and find those books and it will help you understand a lot of that. Or maybe you can do a past life regression yourself with someone who does this. And I promise you that will change your life. Like you will find some things that you never knew and they're all stored in your subconscious mind. Right, that's so true. And um, even if, you know, you, you a part of you is interested, but a part of you is in uh, borderline rejecting the information, just read it as a story, you know, just pretend it's not true. So you don't, you, you, you get your rational mind out of the way and you will just register the information that you, that you need to register and it will be doing its work within you. And at some point it, it will probably resonate in a, in a way or another. And regarding past life regression. Yeah, that's a, that's a very, very powerful tool and uh, once again, whether you believe it or not, uh, it, it it's going to once again trigger some memories that you consciously you're not aware of, but it's gonna hit something within you, and your something within is gonna be like, oh, wow. Even if you don't know what it is, like even if like yourself, I've been I've always believed in those believed in those things, and uh, as a child, and you know, like 
it's been all my life, uh, even if I was not consciously aware to, you know, of everything to this extent, and we grow every day. Sometimes, you know, in the past, they would have uh, healing sessions before, you know, back in the days when I was still a corporate worker. So I was not doing this for, for a living. Uh, I would go to a, a psychic or a healer and they would say things. And my conscious mind was like, oh, that's mm, weird. But something within me that I couldn't explain would resonate and know, like this inner knowing, this inner inner voice that tells you that, yeah, that like you've hit something here. Even if the conscious mind is not able to rationally make any sense of it. So, and that's also why I... I don't really want to use the word the word channel anymore. I mean, I'm careful when I use it because channeling gives you the the feeling that you are channeling from beings outside of yourself. And of course, it's possible. Don't get me wrong. But personally, that's not something I resonate with. When I say when I use the term channeling, and I try not to use it because once again, it can mean different things to different people. For me, it's just being in touch with source, my own source, and my own source is connected to the universal source that, you know, however you call creator, God, or whatever name you put on this almighty power of unconditional love, if you if you will, um, we are always connected to this uh, this truth this wisdom this universal knowledge and once again unconditional love so everything is within you in your aura in your subconscious mind because we are whole so you don't necessarily need to channel this or that being you can if you want but just make sure you are really talking to the real one and not to an impostor but that's a whole other story Uh, but you don't need to of course you have spirit guides you can talk to them if you want but what about your own inner knowing because we there is no separation uh, in the in the universe especially at higher in higher dimensions so your own knowledge is not separated from the universe's knowledge like the universal knowledge or your spirit guides know knowledge so you can choose to ask your spirit guides if you want, but what about your own higher self? And it's and it's we are calling it higher self, not because it's outside of ourselves. It's just higher in terms of vibration, but it's still you. So it's it's a way of uh, really learning to get the knowledge from within. You know when we say when we say things like. Oh, my higher self told me to. I like, it's still placing the higher self outside of yourself, right? It's more that I feel, I feel this this message from my inner, my own inner knowing. Sorry, maybe I'm digressing a little bit from the initial topic, but this is so important in my eyes. And uh, just to to close on this, uh, on this very topic, I see a lot of people, unfortunately, channeling beings, whether they think it's their grandma or uh, whatever archangel, talking to impostors, and then they start having symptoms and like heaviness, headaches, depression, and things like that. Those are impostors. So not always, but it happens. So it's about being very careful here yeah we really need to be careful and yeah this can be really overwhelming and I I know that it used to be for me when I started to explore about this information and learn more about these topics but I was always like oh I want to learn everything I just want to know everything because it just made so much sense like I knew it in my bones and now I was just remembering because I was raised 
in a Catholic religion. And I was raised with a lot of fear towards God, a lot of fear about hell and heaven and all these stuff, like you being a sinner and having all this like negative mindset and not actually loving yourself, but actually thinking that everything is a sin and that I'm just a sinner. I'm not worried of anything bigger. And it was not at all empowering for me. And I know that this can be a trigger for someone to hear this, but it's just my personal opinion. And for me, it never just like, I used to believe in that, you know, blindly because I did not know anything else. But later when I started to actually think more for myself and not what my parents used to tell me or my teachers what used to tell me, I would be like, what if this is not true? about the heaven and hell like I just know that it's it's not like I don't know how I know I just know it's it's not it there has to be something bigger and then later you know like you actually start to find out more about the reincarnation and all the stuff and how you know there's so much love and like you will not get punished for anything that you did but that also brings me back to something you mentioned in the beginning about, you know, we go through these cycles in our lives, not all of us, but many people do, cycle of karma. And that's why a lot of people are incarnating over and over and over again here because they cannot clear that karma, because they cannot remember um, the truth. I call this the truth because it's like truth about yourself, where you're coming from, truth about the universal love, the unconditional love, and uh, where you, where do you come from, who you are, and all these stuff, like you don't remember, and that's why, like when you incarnate in the human body, you forget, you forget everything, you forget who you are, you forget every single thing, why you came here, and that's why a lot of people are going through the cycles of incarnating over and over and over again, and not actually resolving the karma that they have right now. And I feel like what I am reading currently is, and it makes a lot of sense for me, is that a lot of like light workers have been brought here because a lot of people are going through the cycle of karma and cannot wake up. Like the consciousness of the planet did not rise for a very long time and that's why they decided to bring other other souls other from other places to help raise this consciousness of this planet and that's why sometimes for us can be very hard to um, resonate with some human stuff and i know that you know i have this beautiful connection with the higher power and it's so easy for me to do but sometimes i struggle with the human things like, how do I actually live life here? Because you need to make money to live here. You need to, you know, do some things over and over and over again, because that is life. And, you know, making peace with that for me was something very hard. I can relate to that. And I actually realized a few years ago that I was re resenting myself for choosing to come here on earth and I was <laughs> I was like you know thinking well at least my parents only had one child that's you know that's good so you, you know like why did you ever like even want to have a child like what the hell like why and I really had to work through that to forgive myself for being born <laughs> I know it might sound crazy, but that, that really helped because I, I had realized that why would I choose this for myself? And of course, this was maybe, I don't know, maybe 2015 or something like that. And I, I was not aware that I had this resentment towards myself, but I was being horrible towards myself back in the days. And I really had to learn how to be one with myself and reunite and it's a tendency as humans to place authority outside of ourselves 
that's what we are taught like as children we are taught that our parents are not going to say always right but like um they are the authority figure like or parents or caretakers or whoever is raising you right like during your upbringing when you are a very very little child and then when you when you grow up and you start awakening and then you start seeing your family's wounds you're like oh man um wow i i thought my parents had it all figured out or my caretakers or even my teachers and that's th that was a kind of a shock for me because I'm like, yeah, like when I'm an adult, I will, you know, life will be better. I won't be bullied anymore and things like that. So you you kind of tend to place the adulthood as the <laughs> like level to reach, and then your your problems are over, you know, like from a very very young age, you know. And then so it, it's like this illusion that is busted. <laughs> When you grow up and you realize that actually it's just the physical age that is changing, but the, the wounded inner child that might have stopped growing in an aspect of the personality is still stuck to that moment uh, that the trauma happened for one specific aspect. And it's okay. We all go through that. It's just that sometimes you you look at people and once again, without wanting to sound like I know everything, because that's not the case, but to my level of awareness right now, when I see two people arguing, all I see is two wounded children who don't know how to communicate and tell each other that they love each other. And that's really painful because sometimes you have so many emotions that are getting involved. You just want to tell them, look, you, you are arguing, but you are the same. You have the same wound. Just shake each other hands and just, you know, heal together. But of course, that would be in unicorn land that that would happen. <laughs> but you, you know what I mean? Like when, when you see the, the bigger picture, like arguments are not necessary. They are only useful if you want to grow from it and realize that it's just a wound. And when I say arguments are not necessary, I'm not talking about emotions. Emotions are. But I mean, sometimes with awareness on our emotions, uh, we can avoid some arguments or we can see that something is starting to grow into an argument and pull back just realize like step back and be like okay i see the pattern here so let's shift the energy basically so yeah it's uh and a, a lot of people like you and i are very sensitive to to these things like when i when i hear someone shout uh, or having an argument that makes me really uncomfortable and that's not from a place of trauma i mean i've I've been through that, like people being in rage and things like that. But even now, even if there are many layers and I can talk about some of my trauma without having any emotional reaction, they are just like, like I would read a book. I'm fine. Um, I, I still cannot stand people shouting, for example, in an argument, because if you're shouting and happy, that's a different story. Go ahead. That's fine. <laughs> But it's just, um, yeah, like, why? You know, that's not necessary. Express, express your emotions, but in a way that is not going to harm someone else. Yeah, we need a lot of work, inner work on that, on our emotional intelligence. And that comes the more you start to wake up. Mm -hmm. You actually want to do this. You actually desire to become a better person. You actually desire to work on your emotional intelligence. You actually desire to help other humans to do the same. And yeah, it's just, it's required. And, you know, that is why we are here in a, in a way to help others to, to do that for themselves. Because first we have to do this. 
first we have to wake up. It's not just like you come and you know everything because you forget. As you incarnate, you forget and you have to remember first and then help others to remember. Right. You have to do this work on yourself and you have all these triggers and you have all these wounds and traumas and stuff so you can relate to other people. So you can actually understand the human life here on, on earth because right now we have a lot of trauma. Right now we have a lot of misunderstanding and a lot of negativity and a lot of like wars and hurt. Mm. And we have to understand that first but as we, you know, evolve, as we rise our consciousness, that will start to disappear more and more and more. Of course, we are far away from that and it will, it will take thousands of years, but, you know, mm. we're here for it. We're here to, here to do all this stuff, mm. right? Yeah, and it starts with accepting our emotions, accepting that it's part of us and it doesn't make us bad people for being angry is just channeling emotion and here i'm using channeling in the way like letting them through intern not internalizing them as in attaching a story to them or uh, lashing out on other people it's more about talking things out and expressing and helping each other heal, really, like being there for each other, for one another, and uh, not feeding the negative energy. Because at the end of the day, it's about transmuting. Transmuting, not by faking the positivity. I do not believe in that. It's transmuting by shining the light, accepting the wound. Doesn't mean what happened was okay, because nobody. <clears throat> nobody deserves to go through trauma and abuse or things like that but accepting that we cannot change the past and trusting that if we would have known better we would have done better so why beat ourselves up for something so it's about becoming really your your own best friend during adversity whatever your past has been and you know, I went through that myself. I'm like, oh man, why did I let that happen to, to me? Uh, why, why did this happen? But then you're like, that's not going to help me grow. Why did I help? Why did I let that happen to me? Uh, I didn't consciously do it. Maybe I self-abandoned at some point, but that's because I wasn't taught as a little child and I couldn't be there for myself because my, my primary basic needs as a child, which are like food, drinks, uh, love and safety, basically, at some point they weren't met. So how could I be there for myself if I haven't been taught to do so and if I didn't have this model? in my upbringing and i'm not the only one you know this it's very common for for all of us on earth actually to to have this rejection abandoned humiliation wound uh you know um i was uh, betrayal as well and all of these are related you know it's rare to only have one major soul wound because when you feel rejected, you also feel abandoned. And then you are not taught to be there to, for yourself. So it's, it's reparenting yourself, actually. And that's powerful. It's not easy. I'm not saying it's easy. <laughs> not at all. Far from it. But it's possible. And step by step. You know, it's a step by step process. And you, do this from a place of uh, self-love, not from a place of self-hatred. Like, oh, I hate who I am. I just want to be someone else. No, it's like, I know I deserve better and I'm going to be there for myself because if I cannot be there for myself, who else will? Yeah. 
And I know it's very hard to actually see the bigger picture when mm. you are going through this stuff. It's actually very hard to remember and say, oh, this is just a lesson when you're going to a trauma or very hard mm. time in your life. It's it's very hard, but mm. later you you say that to yourself. Later you're like, yes, it's just a lesson. I'm learning so much from this and it's actually making me more aware of everything that's going on more aware of who I am and what I'm here to do and it's actually helping me to become that person and you know like when you are becoming aware more and more to this it's sometimes very hard to how do I say it's very hard to find yourself at first it's very hard Mm. to understand everything and it can be very overwhelming and that's okay but you know that happened to me it's like I had to also forgive myself for wanting to be here and for choosing I don't know this family and this place and everything and sometimes I think oh it would be just easier if I didn't remember anything if I just was a normal human being with a normal job you know with a normal family doing normal human things but you know then you're just stuck in a karma loop that you will still have to get here where you are right now you you still have to remember all this stuff and heal uh but yes I know that you know, life can sometimes be hard and like, mm. oh, I don't really understand what's going on here. Why is this happening? You know, in the in the in the world, why are these things happening? But you know, it doesn't have to make any sense. It's okay for things to not make any sense to us. And that's why we're here to actually wake up people and say, like, hey, this this is not okay. Like if you forgive yourself you can forgive others too you can work on this but you know it takes time Mm. because I know when I look at my life how asleep I was you know I was also very reactive I was also very anxious I was also Mm -hmm. very like full of jealousy and I used to think that I was a very bad person and I had to forgive myself first for all these things because I did not know any better Like no one told me these things Mm. because they did not know because, you know, my parents were also going from their own wounds, Mm. you know, raising me from their wounds and from their traumas and all the stuff that happened to them. But now it's different. It's like waking up more and more and more. And yeah, that is helping the humanity. And as I said in the beginning, like you don't even have to be this like a, well-known person or very wealthy person to be able to influence people just your presence is enough like you don't have to go on this big search of like what is my purpose it's just being here is your purpose and doing this work yourself on yourself is doing so so much for people and of course you will not notice this with other human beings but on a subconscious level big big change is happening we are not aware of that but huge change is happening right now on earth yeah definitely and uh, once again we are programmed to to seek proof and we want to see changes we want to see uh, like we tend to yeah to 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 seek external validation or external proofs of what 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 we are doing is actually enough and valid and this is um that's not how it works we we really need to come to that place inside and and it's a journey you know i i'm not fully there myself i still sometimes like am i really doing enough or you know like it's this constant action take action um you know do 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 this is the the patriarchal society this masculine energy in the in the society so we are not taught that just being is enough 
And then when, when you say this to someone who is not aware of that, it's just like, okay, so you're just sitting your butt on your chair and you're enough. Like you're going, how are you going to make, make a living out of that? You know, so it's just extreme and it's um, subtle, uh, subtle energies. And um, it's really the inner work. Because when you change your inner work, that's how you change your external reality because as within so without as above so below and if you know the, the more of us will realize that and shift from within the more the world will heal and our quality of life will improve and we will not be as stressed we will not have so many pressure. We will not be as influenced by the news or whatever we see in the mainstream. Um, the biggest, I mean, the, the most effective and efficient ways to not be affected by the external world is to actually shut down the, what I call the doom box, is the TV, the television. Whose, vis whose vision are they telling? That's a whole other story, but um, not watching the news and trusting that the piece of information that you are meant to receive will reach you. I haven't watched the yeah. news for years. Mm -hmm, same. And the, the piece of news that I need to be made aware of always comes to me, whether it's a friend sending me a, a message or sharing a post, or just me having an insight to look up something on a uh, search engine or something like that. I've always been made aware of what I had to be made aware of. So, yeah. Yeah, same for me. Like, I went one day to this like news platform just to read something I wanted to find something because I heard about this news and I was scrolling just to see you know I was scrolling 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 and five minutes of scrolling I did not find one article that was empowering or positive everything was just fear 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 yeah so I just want to say before we wrap this up is like finding that balance between a human and a soul is everything. You know, you can start to wake up, but you can also lose yourself in all this knowledge. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to lose yourself and feel very disconnected from society and other human beings and from your own body, from your own human shell. But if we want to actually contribute if you if we want to have a good life for ourselves first we have to learn the balance too we have to learn how to also be a human being how to actually function in this today's world because uh, as you said like we have to make a living we have to pay the bills that is just a normal thing that we have to do as humans yeah. But it's possible. It's possible to to be both, to do both. And it's just like learning on the way. The more you do inner work and the more you actually awake, uh, actually awaken, it will become easier because yeah. you will see a bigger picture and you will be okay with being a human being too. And being yourself and also being okay. And this is also a reminder for, my, for myself uh, as I'm saying this out loud. Remember that if nothing works for you, if you feel, sorry, if you feel that nothing works for you, if, you've, if you have heard of things, if you've tried other people's ways or strategies, or it doesn't matter which field of life it is. It doesn't mean that nothing will ever work for you. It just means that you are not made, made or meant both to follow. You're just here to lead. So you need to let go of everything that you think you should do and everything that you 
think you should be and find who you really are. Like I'm actually going to give a journal prompt here. Who would you be? Or actually, who are you when you let go of all the expectations that other people other people have from you? Sorry, cannot talk anymore. <laughs> and who are you when you allow yourself to define yourself? Who is the being who is listening to us right now? What are his or her dreams, goals? You know, that, that's the identity, the I. Mm. So, yeah, that was the little journal prompt. <laughs> that's such an amazing question that you can ask yourself and really think about, like, who is this? Yeah, who do I actually want to be when I leave all this stuff and all these expectations? Yeah, because y- you have other people's expectations of you like you are consciously aware of but you also have the story that you make in your head about what other people must be thinking of you Mm -hmm. this is also a tricky one and once again i've been there myself like we we have all projected at some point oh these people will will think this or that or i have to be this in order to be accepted or if i say this that's not going to be okay just who is the you who who is true and authentic and we have different levels of authenticity as we expand of of course as we peel the layers of the onion it always comes back to the onion (laughs) yeah there's so many layers (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah so that was uh that was a very enjoyable talk I really enjoyed our conversation. You and mean, I mean, I can always talk about this topic. It's one of my favorite things mm-hmm. <laughs> to talk about. And I'm really happy that actually, you know, I can talk about this with someone who understands this. And mm-hmm. there are many people who are actually listening to this and, you know, waking up and having the same realizations as us. And we can actually help other people with talking about this Mm. like we're not crazy you're not crazy it's okay and you are enough with just being here but also if you want something more and something if you want to actually contribute in a way that you're impacting other people you can do that too you can do whatever you want you don't have to be this big I don't know, celebrity or anything to impact other people. Actually, many celebrities today, they're not really light workers. They're not contributing to society in in a good way that I, I can say, oh, wow, this person really inspired me. Very rare people are like that. So you can do, you can actually work in the shadows if you want. You know, I'm always going from one to the other, you know, like I can impact people with the podcast, with my business, but also Mm -hmm. I'm like working in the shadows and just being and just like helping people to raise their consciousness with just me being there, you know, with my energy. Yes. Yeah, that's a, that's a good way to put it. And and you and I see things the same way. We are not here to teach anything new. We are yeah. here to teach you how to remember what is already within you. Absolutely. And that's a very, to me, that's, um, you know, it, it's important to be humble about it in the way that it's, um, I'm not for the guru mentality or, you know, mm-hmm. like uh, putting people on a pedestal or being yeah. put on a pedestal or anything like that. You know, it's about uh, being real, being mm-hmm. real and uh, doing our best, trusting that we are doing our best with the, with pure intentions without being into this. Because um, there are also shadow, <laughs> shadow or shady <laughs> aspects of, uh, of, this industry of uh, you know the narcissistic gaslighting yeah uh i tell you so so it is like that and if you do not do what i say then sorry you're lost mm-hmm. you know that's um no 
I know better, so do what I'm saying. No, it's I'm offering a point of view. Resonate with it or not. Mm -hmm. Let's discuss about it. You're free to mm -hmm. reject it if that doesn't resonate. But at least you will have used your own discernment. You will yeah. use your own inner critic. And that's, that's what we want. That's what we want. And that's so much more powerful than actually people giving you answers because you are powerful in the same way as others. We are all equals. No one is better than other people, you know. No one's better than you just because they make more money or, you know, we can tend to think this way. But when you think about it, it's just another soul doing, you know, human stuff here. So, yeah, like trust yourself first. The more you wake up, the more you will trust yourself and not put people on the pedestal, right? right. Yeah. And, yeah. So before we finish, Morgan, what are your platforms? Where can people connect with you? <laughs> Thanks a lot. So you can find me on my website, morganrose.com, and find my services, whether it is coaching or shamanic healing work or energy cleansing. I have different services because it's fun and I love to serve people in different ways that resonate with them. I also have a podcast on Anchor. All my links are on my website anyway. So I would say my website is where the party's at. Yeah. <laughs> are, you, mm, sorry? are you... Sorry? Um... Are you having a, some kind of promotion right now or something that you want uh, I'm actually yeah. planning to have some promotion I just haven't gotten to to it I was working on my uh, I was working on my French uh, business like the French aspect mm -hmm. of my business but I'm going to come up with a few special offers really soon. So hopefully by the end of this week, and right now today is the 23rd of November. I'm not quite sure yet when we are going to release this episode, but I'm planning to have things for the end of the year. So from now until mm -hmm. the end of this calendar year, because time is an illusion, but <laughs> um, I will be having things going on. So feel free to subscribe to my newsletter from my website if you would like. What That's about amazing. You? That's amazing. Oh, thanks. Um, I'm on Instagram under the Liberation Queen. That's my English uh, business. I also started doing Croatian stuff. Um, and yeah, if you're listening to this, you're probably listening to this on my podcast or your podcast, Morgan. So my podcast is called The Liberation Queen. Same name. That's my brand. And yeah, I do a lot of um, liberate, helping people to liberate themselves from, you know, the past, the limiting belief, the energies that are not serving them and that's why it's called liberation so i'm there or on in facebook on facebook under anna marie or actually i changed my name now it's my my actual name anna maria janish so you can find me there and connect with me and yeah i, I have always I love one-on-one. -on -one, so that's what I'm focusing right now. I still don't know about my creation business. Will I have some masterminds or something? But yeah, one-on-one, -on -one, they're all about either feminine embodiment and business energetics or mindset stuff or working with light workers and starseeds to remember their purpose in this life and, you know, have this beautiful connection and strong connection with higher power so yeah yes amazing so yeah. thank you very much for doing this uh chat this collaboration this conversation it's always fun i feel very I grateful it. to have spent some time with you and i'm grateful for anyone and everyone who will be listening to this whether it is now or in a few years <laughs> yeah he will stay there that's amazing yeah. actually so yeah thank you for listening to us and hopefully we inspired you and motivated you and that's or really nice. just help you realize that everything's okay and you know you're not alone if you feel maybe lost or 
not and raising it always you. gets better you will always get better yeah. you can always connect with us if you feel yeah. like this if you feel like oh maybe i just don't belong here or you're starting to wake up and you have this knowledge and you have no idea where this is coming from you know there's so mm-hmm. many people who feel this way but they're so scared to talk about this yeah don't be scared because there are more people than you could think of even if someone is apparently succeeding apparently happy and like in this at the Mm -hmm. surface level you never know their their struggle so never be afraid to to speak about it or start the conversation and you might be positively surprised so Yeah. yeah okay amazing we will speak to you in the next episode bye thank you bye bye